Grace and peace to you as we gather for worship this morning from St. Paul's United Methodist Church here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I'm Reverend Diane Rue, and I welcome you this morning. I want to begin with some announcements and then some joys and concerns. Uh, we will be beginning this Wednesday another adult education class online. Uh, this one is around denominations. It's called Christianity's Family Tree. And um, that, uh, again, is a Zoom class. And uh, there's a link in this email if you want to join us. We're pleased that we have some folks from across Wisconsin who have been tuning in uh, and are going to be part of that class as well. So please know that that is uh, easily done. So um, if you want to join us, we Zoom on Wednesday nights and the uh, reading is done separately uh, and uh, there's a video that you get as well uh, that we do separately and come together then for conversation. Also, Vacation Bible School is coming up uh, soon. We will uh, be delivering packets again, and there will be a, a video for that as well, and uh, Zoom on uh, the Sundays of August 2nd, 9th, and 16th. Uh, there's information and sign up again uh, on the links here, and you can find those on our website and on Facebook as well. I will say that one of the joys uh, every year in Vacation Bible School is having our wonderful storytellers uh, bring to life the uh, Bible stories for the children. And uh, we've also, at the end of our Vacation Bible School time, every, every year had a Vacation Bible School Sunday, VBS Sunday, where we in worship get to experience some of what the children did uh, throughout the week. Well, this year, um, I'm uh, so privileged to have our youth working with me on telling those uh, stories, and that will be part of the Vacation Bible School video, but we're finding ways to make that part of our Sunday morning as well, that you might uh, see their witness. Uh, I've rewritten some things so that it, they can do those at, uh, at home, and the first one is done, and they've done a great job, and I understand that... Um, David and Goliath will be duking it out in my backyard sometime this week. Uh, so a big thanks to our youth who are taking up leadership in that way and uh, to Will who uh, helps make all of this possible with his skills with video and camera. Um, as you may or may not know, uh, we put together our worship services throughout the week, which is, enables us to uh, have a variety of musicians, to have a variety of witness and leadership from youth and children uh, along the way. Uh, we don't live stream on Sunday morning. Um, we prepare this throughout the week so that you have this on Sunday morning. And it takes a lot of people to do that, and I've just been so blessed to have wonderful folks to, uh, to work with uh, who love worship and who share their gifts uh, so graciously. So uh, we are all blessed. Uh, by the, the leaders um, in worship and music in this congregation. I want to remind you uh, <clears throat> who are uh, nearby that uh, the little free pantry is always full. Um, we keep that stocked for uh, personal needs and canned goods and other things for uh, anyone 24-7. Um, that's available for folks from our congregation, the community, um, so please uh, make use of that. We know that it has been well used, but I haven't reminded about that uh, uh, for a while. So I want you to remember that that is there. I want to share some concerns and some joys that have been uh, shared with us that we might be in prayer not only this morning, but throughout the week uh, for those uh, in need and those who are celebrating. Um, Susan McKenna Slap's uh, mother passed away uh, this last week peacefully. Uh, we want to pray for uh, the family that uh, celebrate her life, um, and uh, Susan and others especially. A uh, request came in from Becky Engebretz, and I understand Roger Lottie's uh, son um, had emergency surgery this week, I think heart bypass surgery, and things went well, I understand, but we want to keep Roger and uh, his son and family in our prayers in the days ahead. Also, Sarah Krause's uh, older brother, Norman, has been hospitalized in intensive care since July 5th. He's uh, had a number of uh, issues 
um, respiratory and other issues. He's not able to communicate and uh, only allowed one visitor per day. It's just very difficult for him, obviously, and for family. And Sarah is praying uh, each and every day for good news and asks us to join her in uh, prayer for Norman, her older brother. And some celebrations. Uh, Lynn and Warren Clark are, will be celebrating their 13th wedding anniversary this coming Tuesday, July 28th. Uh, Lynn and Warren Clark. Uh, so we uh, ask uh, you to uh, give your word of blessing to them and we will uh, pray for them and we also appreciate so much uh, both of their leadership uh, in this congregation. Uh, so blessings to the two of you. I want to uh, uh, have a prayer of thanksgiving. I was blessed that my son and his girlfriend uh, took a road trip uh, out from Colorado to Wisconsin and checked in with family and friends as they camped uh, their way around here. It was a blessing to see them and uh, we got some great hikes in uh, this week as well. And I'm also grateful to our lay preacher, David Atkins, who brings uh, the message uh, for us today. And uh, a word about the closing uh, pieces of music that we will use uh, following his sermon and for benediction. Um, our Dave's family, the children, his kids, uh, Dave and Kim's kids, um, <clears throat> who sang these pieces at the recent uh, funeral for Kim's father. So they were taped uh, from Wesley United Methodist Church at Frederica in St. Simeon's Island, Georgia. So we're blessed with their uh, music uh, this day as well. So let us come before God in a time of prayer. Let us be in an attitude of prayer together. O oh God, you are our refuge and our strength, our very present help in times of trouble. We cry out to you. We put our trust in your saving grace. Our hope is in you, O oh God. When evil darkens our world, give us light. 
When despair numbs our souls, give us hope. When we stumble and fall, lift us up. When doubts assail us, give us faith. When nothing seems sure, give us trust. When ideals fade, give us vision. And when we lose our way, O oh God, be our guide. May we always stand strong and courageous in answering your call in whatever ways it may come in our lives. May we serve with humility those who fear and those who suffer. May we rejoice with those who rejoice and celebrate with those who celebrate the gifts and blessings of this life. We seek to be your people that we might find wisdom in your presence. In humility and in hope, we offer our silent prayers to you this day. And now, as Jesus taught us to pray, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. A scripture reading today comes from the eighth chapter of the letter to the Romans, verses 31 to 39. <clears throat> what then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us? Will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. These are trying times. A few short months ago, 
most of us went about our daily lives in much the same way we had always done. We spent time with family and friends, attended worship services, worked at jobs, shopped, ate in restaurants, and watched sports on television or in person. We even got our hair cut without giving it a second thought. Then, like a tornado forming suddenly and touching down, wreaking havoc in its path, COVID-19 changed everything. I don't know about you, but the last few months have been like nothing I have ever experienced. It is easy and understandable to allow doubt and fear to weigh heavily on our minds. We may even be tempted to believe God has forsaken us. But in our better moments, we remember that we are not the only people who have faced the inevitable difficulties of life. In days like these, perhaps we can learn from someone who held fast to his belief in the ever-present love of God amid his own trying times. I am talking about our church's namesake, St. Paul. Today's scripture passage is contained in the letter of Paul to the Romans. The Apostle Paul wrote this letter about the year 55, while he was living in Corinth. It is Paul's longest letter, and it is addressed to all God's beloved in Rome, which is another way of saying it was meant for the various churches located in Rome. We do not know who established these churches, it was not Paul, but we do know there were both Jewish and Gentile Christians in these churches in Rome. One possible motive Paul had for writing this letter was to deal with friction between the Jew and Gentile converts. It is believed this friction resulted from an edict issued by Emperor Claudius in the year 49, an edict which expelled all Jews from Rome. When Nero became emperor in the year 54, he allowed the Jews to return. It is believed the Gentile Christians had difficulty welcoming their Jewish brethren back into the fold. A fair portion of the letter has Paul reminding the Gentiles, or perhaps explaining to them for the first time, the important role Judaism had played in establishing the new Christian religion. So when Paul quotes Psalm 44 by writing, for your sake we are being killed all day long, we are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. He is calling to mind Jewish history, a history of conflict with neighboring tribes, a history of being invaded by foreign powers, a history of being taken into exile. Perhaps he was trying to make the point to the Gentile believers that the Jewish nation had experienced much suffering while maintaining their unique relationship with God. Or perhaps this was a reminder to them of much more recent history, the fact that their Jewish brethren had been forced to leave Rome only a few years earlier simply because they were Jews. But as we know, that is not the end of the story. Paul goes on to write, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. These words were written by a man who had experienced much suffering himself. By the year 55, he had seen plots against his life. He had been stoned and left for dead. He had struggled with the apostles in Jerusalem over keeping Jewish law. He had had a falling out with Barnabas, and he had been imprisoned. Despite and in the midst of all these hardships, Paul continued to trust 
that he was loved by God as evidenced by the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The love of God. The Jewish nation experienced it. After all, they did not remain in exile forever, but were allowed to return to their homeland, rebuild the temple, and keep the Jewish faith alive. Paul experienced it. His life, about which we read in Acts and his many letters, ended up playing an enormous role in spreading Christianity throughout the Roman Empire and ultimately to the ends of the earth. And so Paul wrote those words which continue to speak to us today. Nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. Like the Jews who were taken into exile and the Jewish Christians who were expelled from Rome, our lives have been disrupted. The world is a vastly different place than it was just a few short months ago. We must be cautious when we are out in public for fear of contracting or spreading the COVID-19 virus. Mass gatherings such as sporting events and conferences are currently out of the question. Many of us are working from home, cut off from personal contact with our colleagues. We cannot visit family or socialize with friends as we would like. We cannot even gather as a congregation at this time. It is enough to make one cry, what in the world is happening? Where is God in all of this? Nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. Do you believe this? I do. I really do. I am confident there will come a time when this virus has been tamed. There will be a vaccine. And there will be effective treatment. But even in the present, Right now, I see God at work during this pandemic in so many ways. Whenever and wherever I see love in action, I see God at work. I see God working through healthcare workers, doctors and nurses and others who put their own health at risk to serve those who have contracted the virus. Love in action, God at work. I see God working through staff members at nursing homes, a continuing presence for those who have been completely cut off from family. Love in action, God at work. I see God working through school administrators who are working overtime this summer to figure out safe, effective, and new ways to allow education to happen this fall. Love in action, God at work. I especially see God working through public health professionals who are doing everything in their power to flatten the terrifying upward curve of this deadly pandemic. Love in action, God at work. Yes, God is at work. In fact, God has already provided us an extremely effective way to stop the spread of this virus, social distancing and the wearing of masks. According to Dr. Robert R. Redfield, director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, we are not defenseless against COVID-19. Cloth face coverings are the, one of the most powerful weapons we have to slow and stop the spread of the virus, particularly when used universally within a community setting. All Americans have a responsibility to protect themselves, their families, and their communities. Now, the relative novelty of the COVID-19 virus means our understanding is limited. However, there is a striking case study which illustrates the effectiveness of face masks. Two hairstylists in Missouri, infected with and having symptoms of COVID-19, worked in a salon whose policy followed a local ordinance requiring cloth face coverings for all employees and patrons. Investigators found that none of the stylist's 139 clients or secondary contacts became ill. And all 67 clients who volunteered to be tested showed no sign of infection. This is nothing new. 
As far back as the time of Moses and Aaron, the effectiveness of social distancing and mask wearing to slow the spread of disease was known. Listen to verse 45 of Leviticus chapter 13. The person who has the leprous disease shall wear torn clothes and let the hair of his head be disheveled and he shall cover his upper lip and cry out unclean, unclean. He shall remain unclean as long as he has the disease, he is unclean. He shall live alone. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. Social distancing and mask wearing are not about politics. They are not about liberty or government overreach. And they most certainly are not a hoax. This is about respecting the laws of the universe, the universe which God created. The ancient Israelites understood that if you have a contagious disease, you must cover the air of your body, which could potentially infect your neighbor, and you must keep your distance from others. They knew nothing about invisible viruses, but they understood they must respect the laws of God's universe. Have you ever heard the story about the man trapped on his roof during a flood? It seems he was praying to God for help. Soon a man in a rowboat came by, and the fellow shouted to the man on the roof, jump in, I can save you. The stranded fellow shouted back, no, it's okay, I'm praying to God, and he is going to save me. So the rowboat went on. Then a motorboat came by. The fellow in the motorboat shouted, jump in, I can save you. To this, the stranded man said, no thanks, I'm praying to God and he is going to save me. I have faith. So the motorboat went on. Then a helicopter came by and the pilot shouted down, grab this rope and I will lift you to safety. To this, the stranded man again replied, no thanks, I'm praying to God and he is going to save me. I have faith. So the helicopter reluctantly flew away. Soon the water rose above the rooftop and the man drowned. He went to heaven. He finally got his chance to, to discuss this whole situation with God, at which point he exclaimed, I had faith in you, but you didn't save me. You let me drown. I don't understand why. To this God replied, I sent you a rowboat and a motorboat and a helicopter. What more did you expect? Look all around and see God at work. We must not allow politics nor fear of the unknown to stop us from doing what God is calling us to do. Nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. May God grant us the wisdom to see where God is already at work during these trying times.
And now may you go forth into the living of your days. And may the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm.